So, you know, you're ready. Really good. So we're going to set up a tool. We're going to go into our tool, ma tool management screen. And add a window to close it. So now that I have my tool management screen up, I want to see what page I'm in. Right now I'm in my tool groups. I've got my tool models for our conversational, which we're going to ignore. And then I've got my all tools. My all tools, I'm going to start by creating a new tool. Right now I've got everything registered here that I could use in the machine. And I could use the slider there. Or there's little arrow keys to split that divider. This is everything that's provided or already set up on turret one, which we've already assigned. So if, once I want to make a new tool, I'm going to hit my plus key. I've got serial number and group number. I'm always going to call by my group number, so I want to know what, what tool I want to actually call. I have tool 31 in there, which is a subspindle tool. And I have tool one of 31. So I'm going to say confirm. There's my new tool that created. If I use the arrow key down, it'll open up or expand my window. I can put in information. I always got to make sure I hit enter. And then I want to select what type it is. So if it's a, a turning tool, I'm going to do turning. If it's a milling tool, I got to do clockwise, counterclockwise. If it's a face tool for milling, I got to select which direction I want to go there. And these will be driven off of the M13, M14 in my program. For personal preference, I can put in what type of tool it is, but it's not necessary for the control. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I, once I assign this tool to the turret, that I at least put my tool offsets in. So I have my geometry for X, Z, Y, my radius, my tip position, and then my wear values. So this tool already being set up in the machine. Under offset 31. I already have an offset here, so I'm just going to copy those over. So I don't have a Y or radius, anything like that, so I'm good here. I don't have to do anything else. I have my load monitoring warning page, so it's going to tell me what my, my axis is after I tell it what I want to sample are actually at what state, so either monitoring or warning or alarm, and then I have my reset for the tool as well. Under here I also have my tool life information, so if I wanted to put a tool life on it, I put my setting life, which is how many parts or in this case how many uses I'm going to get out of it, and then how many uh, times has that tool actually been used. And then I have my resets as well. Let's go back here. So that tool I can tell by looking at it, I don't have a station number and I don't have a little punch out on the side. It's not assigned to a turret position. To do that, I want to use my middle key here where my arrow key is pointing at my tool. I'm going to tap that. It's going to ask me what station number. So what turret station am I mounting this on? So I'm going to say 1. We've already set it up so that it defaults to 3 under the uh, station information page. I'm going to say OK and OK. So now that tool is good to go. It's ready to use, uh, be used. From there, if I look down here, under group number 31, I've got a turning tool set up, it's got life frequency on it. My load monitoring, if I want to manually set these as an operator, I can set them just by checking them and using my 
my standard alarm and warning values. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to tie them into the program. So in my program, we've already got one set up here. Before my rapid move, or sorry, after my first rapid move to get to my workpiece, I'm going to set up my load monitoring. So that's going to be my G313. My A value is what axis I'm going to sample, either my spindle, my X axis, my Z axis, my Y, my spindle 2, or my milling spindle. My S is what subgroup number I want, 1 through 3 on this control. And then M92 to start the sample. After I, I start it, and I have my teaching mode on for the first time, it's going to pick, pick up all my values from this point of my program, my G313, all the way down to my M93. Once I run through on this on the first time, it's going to automatically come back over to my tool page. It'll populate my values. So it'll look similar to this. And you can adjust them after they've been recorded. Correct. As long as the machine's not in cycle, I can adjust the values at any time. So because we're using very light depths of cut, very small tools, we'll have to play around with them and find that happy medium. So we can adjust, we can bump the alarm state up little by little until we're happy with it, and then get the warning to match. So we want the warning always just below the alarm state. So that's what we've done in these two tools. Uh, normally, uh, it would be, if the sample size is 10, this would be uh, 15, and then that would be 12, for example. So we've opened them up just a little bit so that they clear through the uh, through the program without creating too much of an issue. What'll happen is normally it'll sample about 10% of the load of the x-axis in this case. If it hits 15% of it, it'll throw an alarm warning up in the upper hand corner. The red x-axis load limit. And under the tool itself, we'll see uh, a yellow marker here for load. If it's on the warning state, if it's on the alarm state, it'll be red. And then under the load monitoring itself, it'll show that it's been monitoring and then what state it's in. Oh, because we don't have anything set up, it's not set up. So it'll be either uh, warning, or alarm. And then if you have to reset it, the reset's in the bottom one. And then you can continue machine. Correct. I think that's good, right? That's it.